Okay, so welcome to Living Writers interview series. So if you guys are new here, um, the purpose of what we do is to help our writers uh, reach their full potential, whether it's with the writing application or with blogs or interviewing successful writers. So today I'm here with Ivy Smoke and her husband, Ryan. So Ivy is an international best-selling author and Amazon Top 25, is that correct? Yeah, we're actually Amazon top five now. That's Our last amazing. release hit number four. <laughs> That's so amazing. So yeah, I actually had a chance to check out one of the first books of the Hunted series, and I really, I really mm -hmm. like your writing style. It's I'm thank you. I'm a bit of a harsh critic when it comes to um, even just like the first like page of a book. If it's not like hooking mm -hmm. me, I'm just like I hate it. It's boring. I can't do it. <laughs> but um, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, I actually was like right away. I was like, okay, I want to like I have to like kind of prep for this interview, but I'm kind of like wanting to read more of this book right now. But no, it's really <laughs> good. I, I like it a lot. So um, how did you get started with writing? Was it like? always a hobby or a passion or did you just have like this one idea that you had to get out there so I always liked reading I was the nerd that read instead of like went outside and played well I did that too but I was more so reading like all summer long uh but Ryan actually encouraged me uh when, were you my fiance then maybe when we were just dating well so back in college you wrote a book okay yeah I wrote one book in college <laughs> it wasn't very it good. wasn't very good <laughs> and then we we decided to write a fantasy novel as like part of like a competition between us and your mom, mm -hmm. I think was the original thing that we started, but I didn't like writing fantasy and yeah. I released that book under a pen name and it did not do well. Uh, so then I gave up writing for several years oh, wow. and then you encouraged me to go no, back at it. I think it was like the very next, uh, very next year you started writing the romance novels. You, was you it? Yeah. You read 50 shades of gray, uh, oh, for Christmas that yeah. year. I don't even know my own story, mm -hmm. so... Well, you have them for that, that's right. So we, we moved in with my mom, and you were hiding upstairs... Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. ...writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a true story. Yeah, I did write Temptation at his mom's house, which is super awkward. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was like a <laughs> Okay, okay. Yep. So did you have any, like, formal education with, like, writing or anything like that? Or you were just like, I'm just gonna... No, I was a marketing about. major, so I, um, I do like the marketing okay. side of the business, too. Yeah, um, I was definitely going to ask you about that also. Interesting. So, like, when you started writing the book, did you did you do any research on how to write, or did you just start it at all? Like, any plot methods or anything no, like so that? No, at that point, I had I already written two books that, like, they weren't the genre that made me happy, and mm -hmm. then I found Fifty Shades of Grey, and I was like, yeah, I want to I wanna try this. And you, yeah. you thought I could do it too. And that just mm -hmm. fits so much better. Mm -hmm. And I kind of only started reading more romances recently because mm -hmm. uh, I, I liked the idea that I hadn't read a normal romance and I'm always breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, my care, yeah, my fans are kind of always mad at me. They're like, you can't end the book this way. I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's almost good that you didn't really have too much um, contamination from other writers and it's more just like yeah. letting the process go. Okay. Yeah, and I do love thrillers and stuff, so I always have, like, okay, yeah. suspenseful elements in my books, too. Right. Yeah, to me, that's the best. That's, like, a Gillian Flynn type of stuff. That's why mm -hmm. I like Gone yeah. Girl. Okay. So what was, like, the breakthrough piece? What was the first book that you got traction with? Oh, that's a good question. So the Hunted series, which starts with Temptation, mm -hmm. always did pretty well, even without advertising, which was really exciting because my okay. fantasy novel, on the other hand, was just a total flop. <laughs> yeah, that did not do well. <laughs> yeah, and it, it kind of just grew organically on its own, but we uh, actually both started doing it full-time last year. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would probably say the Empire High series is what really launched us. Yeah, that was the first one where, where the first book in the series did really well right from away. release day. Yes, yeah, so and yeah. then like book two and three did even better. And we're working on book four now. I'm coming out with that in May. So uh, I think that, fingers crossed, we'll get to number one in the store. I don't yeah, know. You never know. <laughs> so from a marketing standpoint, do you have any idea how it even took off organically? Was it just um, like any SEO on that or people just... <sighs> word of mouth I, I do think especially because last year with the start of the pandemic and everything I think more people were reading mm -hmm. and I I don't know exactly how it happened but I've always I've always like targeted E.L. James in my Facebook ads so like I 
I uh, try to reach her readers, and we showed up on her also bots. So like my author name is like fourth on her list of like buy these books by these authors they're like her and I think that really really helped and mm -hmm. I, I wish I knew exactly how that happened but I think it's because I was advertising to yeah. her fans uh, so right. I think mean, I've, I've heard so many readers say oh I found you because you were on Fifty Shades of Grey's also bots and I was like that's <laughs> awesome yeah uh, yeah that's amazing yeah it's interesting how nowadays the uh, marketing is so specific like for writers to try and get themselves out there like there's a lot mm -hmm. to know about those specific things and even someone like yourself oh, like so you have much. a background in marketing and you didn't even know it just kind of happened the funniest thing about my background in marketing is so i went when did we graduate uh 2011 yeah. i only had one course in online marketing so all my marketing stuff is for like traditional brick and mortar stores so right. i really did not learn much but i love webinars nothing. and i learned nothing <laughs> but i love watching webinars and yeah. everything so we pretty much taught ourselves how to to market this okay. yeah it, it helped having our toy company before this we kind of learned a little bit about uh online marketing and everything yeah so when i wasn't writing we we also have a a toy company that sells accessories for lego minifigures so oh, we're really? we're all over the place <laughs> that's crazy that's awesome though Okay. So then what is your, what does your writing process look like? I guess it's not too structured, but it seems like you have a, how many books do you have out? Do you know? 26. Wow. Yeah, you know, like 25 or 26. Yeah. And you have a couple more that you haven't released yet that are done. Yeah. I think, I think I've had like, I have 28 written. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so do you have like a, yeah. a formula for how you write this stuff by now? Or is it still just. Ideas? Yeah. I, I wish I had better tips, but I actually don't outline anything. I, I just like mm -hmm. to go into the story kind of blind. I usually know where it ends, especially because I've written a couple of psychological thrillers and I, I know what the twist is. Mm -hmm. But for, for the romances, I always just say I let the characters guide the story. So if I plan out too much, I feel like it comes off a little inauthentic. Right. And I'm trying to like force them down a road that they wouldn't necessarily go in. Mm -hmm. So I always just try to say like, well, what would they do now? And I try to do like funny chapters and balance out with the more emotional sad chapters i love to make people cry it's like i'm, I'm secretly evil yeah and i really like making people cry like i know i wrote a good book if i can make you cry interesting <laughs> i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to read more of your stuff and see if i cry i'll let you know <laughs> um so where do you get your ideas from then with all these 28 books is it just like come to you or like some people say they like have a dream and they have this idea. Yeah. So in the hunted series, I had these core set of characters and you were just like, what's a fantasy of yours? And I was like, I don't know. And you're like, just pick something. I was like, okay, professor student romance novel. <laughs> oh, okay. But then everything's kind of like stemmed off of that because all my books are related. Mm -hmm. So like the empire high series is about like those characters in high school. So I kind of know the characters now and like, I kind of know what they would do mm -hmm. and but I'm always watching shows. And... Yeah, I think a lot of your inspiration comes from all the TV shows that you've watched. Like, yeah. It sounds like a Gossip definitely... Girl type of thing. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely Gossip Girl. Oh, I just yeah. binge watched Gossip Girl, and I was like, <laughs> I have to write a high school story. I want to do this. <laughs> okay, definitely. I haven't seen how it ends, though, so don't tell me who Gossip Girl is. Oh, it's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so how much time do you spend writing every day? Probably like two hours. Yeah, you get angry if you have to write more than two hours a day. Yeah, it takes me about two hours to write a chapter. And then uh, you edit my book. So he'll read the chapter, send it back to me, and I'll edit it. And then I do a bunch of marketing. Uh, yeah, so really I don't write that much every day just because I, I get this thing called mush brain where mm. if I write too many words in one day, I yeah. can't even talk. Like, I'll just try to say something. You're like, what are you saying? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, there, there was one time where she had set a deadline for herself, and she was, like, way behind. So one day she wrote, I think, 40,000 words in one day. And and after that, she just, like, couldn't speak for a week. I think um, I didn't write again for, like, two months, though. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it was really bad. So don't do that again. I remember we were going for a walk, and I said something. You're like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. Okay. And so how did you, how did this whole writing, editing collaboration happen? Like, were you like, I know how to edit books? Or did you just decide that you were going to start editing her stuff for her? So I, I've always um, 
like edited things for people. Like back in in college, <laughs> I edited uh, one of her papers, and I I marked it up so bad that she like cried and didn't want to talk to me for a week. Yeah, no, we were friends in yeah. college, and I had this paper due, and I was like, "Could you read this for me real quick? I just want to make sure it doesn't have any errors." Like spelling it had errors. a lot of errors. No, 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 it did not. <laughs> like I meant like actual errors. And he was like, "No, you should like reword this," and and it was just completely oh. inked up. And I was like, "What is wrong with you? I'm not your friend anymore." <laughs> <laughs> is that how it usually goes to like are you still like like how involved are you in this editing is it no more not touching the creative stuff or right. is it just yeah he he knows what not to to do because i'll freak out i don't like to edit stuff if i if you have like a lot of corrections i i'm like no <laughs> yeah the usually the only time i edit something is if like i have to read a line like two or three times to figure out what the heck she's talking about and then i'll, okay. I'll highlight it mm -hmm. uh, but other than that i figured you know, your fans like your books, obviously, so just let it go. <laughs> yeah, that works. So, so how long does it take to write a whole book for you? So it's like two hours. Usually often. between two and three months, depending on how focused I am. Okay. That's not bad. I mean, usually a lot of times it takes people like years to write a book, so that's yeah, Amazing. he's also an author, and it takes him years to write a book. Well, I yeah. just get distracted. Yeah, totally opposite approach to me. I'm just like, just write it, it's done. You're like, no, I need to edit this ten times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, what's your – that's the thing. I've actually – I've written – I'm a, I started as a nutritionist, and then I was writing a book for weight loss. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, it was just like the perfectionist thing was my challenge, like how yeah. you're saying. Like, for you, is it – what's what's the challenge? Is there any, or are you just like – throwing yeah, them out weird. there and that's it in my life outside of writing I am a perfectionist like I need everything to be a certain way but for some mm. reason with writing I'm not what do you think my biggest challenge is mm. I don't know I will say when I was when I just first started writing and we didn't have a huge fan base uh mm. it felt a little bit easier and now I feel like there's expectations and it makes me nervous like, I, I feel like I know they're going to like it, but I do kind of freak out more on release days than I did before. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest challenges, I think, is when you're made of steel, it was like kind of mm -hmm. a darker book and you like got a little caught up in the, the characters and you weren't very happy. Oh, yeah. I, I do let the, like I said, I let the characters guide the story, but I kind of become them. And I, yeah, I feel like I was like depressed for a year when I was writing that series. Like I was, he, I had actually, you told me to stop writing it because we were planning our wedding. And mm -hmm. he was like, you can't do this right now. So yeah, I kind of take on their emotions and that's, that's not always a good thing. Wow. It's like method writing as opposed to yeah. method acting. Yeah. So I, I try not okay. to write as many dark things now. You still make yourself cry like five times a week though. I was just oh. crying the other day. Yeah. He'll, he'll look over at me at my, my keyboard and be like, what are you writing? <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. So, so I guess when you, when you started then, did, did you have like an intention that like, I'm going to be a successful writer? Cause you said it was just this, this, um, this competition with, with his mom, you said? Yeah. So I am super competitive and I, I always want everything to be the best it possibly can be. Mm. And I will say, I think I have won that competition. Yeah, because I actually, won the fantasy novel competition. I, I actually yeah. republished the book under my name and it, it did pretty well now that like I have. The okay. Thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I, I want to, I want to be like the next JK Rowling. Like I want to be better. Few, better. Yeah. <laughs> we have a vision board and it says like, we want to get a movie deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to buy a castle mansion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh, that's so interesting. Castle. I know someone that has a castle mansion. Yeah, you, you do? do? We need yeah. pictures immediately. And can okay. we <laughs> <laughs> The, the last funny. one is to sell 100 million copies. Okay, yeah. We've only sold a million copies, do you know? Two million? Yeah, only a million. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> oh, hopefully it doesn't take us 100 more years to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know? Okay. No, that's awesome. That's so were you like I guess you weren't that with this like drive that you have for this, you weren't that aggressive though in the beginning with the marketing. It was just kinda like, Oh, wait a yeah, second, so this happened. In the beginning I was balancing uh I was also the CMO of our other company. So I had to balance marketing for the toys with writing and I didn't have enough time to focus on marketing for the books. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until we actually, uh, my little sister runs our toy company now. 
So she handles my old mm-hmm. job for that, <laughs> and now we're both full time on the books. Mm-hmm. And it's just really just like as soon as we both went full time, it just skyrocketed. Yeah, it, it really is a full time job for two people, maybe more. I don't know how anyone <laughs> does it by themselves. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely couldn't do it just me. Well, for like the with the editing process or just and the, the work and the right yeah like if i if i could just write and do nothing else i would be very happy but there just isn't mm-hmm. time to do that yeah it's like marketing answering emails going on the facebook group which is a lot of fun but also very time consuming yeah you know? i love our facebook group i mean they're way too much like i probably have written as many words in that a day as i do on the actual yeah. manuscript yeah. wow <laughs> so you yeah, spend like, like sorry go ahead uh oh also like you know designing the covers redoing the covers when the first covers mm-hmm. don't work uh updating the back matter uh, when the, it needs the, to be updated. Writing the blurb it's, five million it's, times. It's never ending. I mm-hmm. hate writing blurbs. Uh. <laughs> do you guys get any outside help, like, aside from yourselves? Like, do you use any resources for the publishing or the marketing or the design, right. anything like that? So we have uh, our moderators for mm-hmm. the Facebook group, and they're awesome and, and have really helped us. Mm-hmm. But in we terms have a, of we have a, do have a PR company that just reaches out to bloggers for our new yeah, releases. Yeah, yeah, she handles the art team. But that's really that's really it. Like we do all the formatting and the covers and and everything else. Yeah, he's also wow. a graphic designer, so all that luckily helps. he can do the covers. <laughs> that's amazing. So how so you spend like 2 hours writing a day, then how many hours a day is everything else? It's a good question. So I can work anywhere between like zero hours a day and like 10 hours a day (laughs) depending so yeah i I, how now i'm just wondering where does my time go because i feel like i'm not the facebook group group. (laughs) it's more fun though interacting with people especially like this year where we haven't been out of the house we've actually been in quarantine for like a whole year now (laughs) yeah the last time we got went into a store was march yeah really went into a store for like doing a um, like, like a bookstore like, type of thing? We were like at Target just like getting just, stuff. Just buying something. Oh, really? yeah, so we haven't been in like a store for anything. <laughs> oh my god, wow. Are you guys in um in Delaware? Mm-hmm. Um, we're in New York over here. So it's um is everything like locked down for you guys? Or are you just like voluntarily kind of not yeah i don't really know we just decided not to leave the house because we don't want to get coronavirus and we didn't like leaving the house anyway before this started <laughs> okay. so it was like kind of a great situation it was kind of a good that excuse works. and I, that's yeah. probably part of why we did better too is because we were so focused yeah we yeah i was gonna ask stupid obligations yeah. mm-hmm. so it helped then the mm-hmm. quarantine helped the Definitely. success okay yeah i mean we noticed a lot more writers um on board since the quarantine so I definitely understand that. Is there anything that you know now with like the writing process or the marketing or anything like that, that you wish that you had known right from the beginning? So many things. Everything, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, anything specific. Oh. I'm going to eat for help with this one. <laughs> Uh, we basically knew nothing so it is like a really hard question yeah i mean there's like the obvious advice like make sure that your cover like Mm -hmm. matches the genre of course um Mm. like it's actually been crazy how much of a difference it's made when we've uh redone our covers when they've Mm -hmm. like kind of gotten off trend a little bit um you know like we'll go from like well we just did it and we went from like 500 in the store and now with the same amount of marketing that same book is at like 250 in the store wow. um, so, so that's just like so one covers make a big difference. yeah i'm yeah. always really so, passionate about the covers i choose so it, it's always mm-hmm. hard for me to switch but i i do think sometimes we go off trend and then we have to reel ourselves back in yeah oh here's a theory that i have um <laughs> I think that the blurbs are more likely to make someone not read your book than it is to to make someone read your book. So, like, when you're writing a blurb, just make sure that you don't give anyone a reason to, like, not read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like almost like you're looking for validation that you will like it instead of, yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> Would that mean, like, trying not to be too specific when yeah, you're writing a blurb? Yeah, like, make it, like, pretty really vague short. And, and just... Like, if it's, like, a romance novel, right, just make it clear that it's a romance novel, but Mm -hmm. don't necessarily mention, like, something about the characters that might turn someone off. 
you definitely have to spend money uh, marketing. You can't just like put it out there and think it's the best book ever and that people will somehow magically find it. That yeah. doesn't work. We did that at first and it was fine, but it's it's better now. <laughs> yeah. 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 My biggest advice is write somewhere comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a copper bracelet. Wear, oh, no, actually, that's it. <laughs> Wear a copper bracelet because really? it'll stay in your wrists from carpal tunnel. Yeah. I have really does it. In our wrists, and uh, it, this basically saved me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't write for a couple months, and then I got this bracelet, and now I haven't needed to stop at all. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty good advice. <laughs> I like it. You guys are full of good advice. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, I'm assuming you're working on something now, you said? Yes, I am working on Empire High Book 4, which comes out in May. I'm hoping to be done next month. It's going to be a little bit longer than most of your books have been, Mm -hmm. Um, so you can kind of stop anytime soon. Yeah, I'm 70,000 words in, and normally my books are between 80 and 90, but I'm going for like 110,000 words this time, so we'll see. It's good to have more words in Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, an ending in mind already for the whole series? Or are you still just going at it? So I did have an ending in mind. Um, mm-hmm. And then the characters have a different idea in their head right now. Yeah, the we'll last chapter happens. that you wrote really threw a wrench in things. <laughs> <It really did. laughs> but I'll never go back and change stuff. So I've already, I'm on this yeah, path now. Happened. It's destructive and I'll see what happens. <laughs> Have you been like that for the entire time? Like, if you're you're on the path, like, you're not changing it? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like probably a lot of the reason people take so long to write a book is because you just kind of keep second-guessing yourself and changing Yeah, I feel like it's around. really easy to be indecisive with it, but I feel like that just makes it take forever. hmm Yeah. So but your advice would be just, just churn it out, just let it happen? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. It's probably faster to just like write a book and have it be crappy and write another one rather than going back and editing the first one 20 times. Yeah, I exactly. So. And then you learn something. <laughs> from... That's amazing. I love it. Do you have any advice on how people can improve their writing style? Like, have you improved as you've gone along or are you just still? I think, I think that just writing more helps. Mm-hmm. Do you listen to any feedback from people? Like, where is that? So I think I'm I'm more stubborn now than I used to be. So like, originally I'd look and I'd read the one star reviews and cry, and I feel like I've gotten (laughs) much tougher skin. And I I honestly don't take feedback now. Like I I read one star reviews and laugh. So it's fine (laughs) if people want to do that. Like they don't they don't like my books. They wouldn't get along with me. So like I I kind of feel like we're just not on the same wavelength so that's fine if people don't like my mm-hmm. books i'm okay with that but i'm not going to change them just because they don't like me basically <laughs> uh but i mean i take your advice well my advice is the best advice <laughs> and what's that specific or just all your advice is just the best just advice. All my advice. <laughs> <laughs> you are the smartest person i know so mm. yeah Oh, Although, that's... going back to college, I did not take your advice on that paper, and I think I got an A, so... Well, that professor is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, bottom line is just marry someone who's an editor and a graphic designer, as long as you're writing. It works writing. out really well. I do recommend that. Mm-hmm. Or if you're okay. those things yourself, that works, too. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. do some graphic design. I do a little bit. You're pretty good at it, actually. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Would you have hired someone? Like, if, if he didn't have this experience with that, would you have hired like a, an editor and a graphic designer and all that? Or do you think yeah, maybe think you I just would have... I think I would have had to. Do you think you would have hired an editor or just a, a graphic designer for the covers? I don't really do that much editing, you know? Right. So I think... <laughs> um, so I also have, like, an ARC team who mm-hmm. will shoot me back uh, if they find, like, an error or, like, a typo or something. So it's possible I could have created, like, a more focused one that would help me after a first draft. You're also pretty good about, like, getting the commas in the right place and stuff. Like, my mom writes books, and when she sends me a draft to edit, the commas are just, like, all over the place, and it's a hot mess. So, like, The commas yeah. commas mm-hmm. are tough, but, yeah, I feel like... Also, every time you edit something, I feel like I try not to make that mistake again. Mm-hmm. I actually have a list of common mistakes that I go through before you read stuff. Like, I'll go... Like, I always mix up 
like a discreet and dis- I don't even know how to say the other word. Discreet. <laughs> discreet. They're both discreet, but one's the E-T-E and one's E-T-E. Yeah, it's very confusing. Ah, so I always have to just double check that at the end. There's like words like that where I know I get it wrong every time. And the lay, lie, laid thing. Mm-hmm. Peak. <laughs> Peak, yeah. <laughs> so just a, a list of words that are easy to, <laughs> to do wrong. And then also they have, a, I think on a word, but also I use Grammarly, which... All right. Common mistakes. Yeah, we yeah. actually we have Grammarly integrated mm-hmm. into loving there. So that's good. Yeah, good to know awesome. it's useful. Grammarly really needs a, a way to just like have them stop telling you to do certain things that clearly you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's well, true. Like, when we use Grammarly, it'll say, like, you have a thousand corrections to make, and I'll accept, like, four of those corrections. Right, but you have to go through all of them to find the ones that are actually uh, needing powerful. to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I hear you. So um, something like a question from a lot of our writers. Um, We did a survey recently and found a lot of our writers are mostly women, actually uh, romance writers. So do you have any tips for them specifically to write more engagingly or with more confidence? Hmm. I know, like personally, I, I like first person. I feel like it is automatically more engaging because mm. it feels like you're right there with the characters. Absolutely. But that, that is just like a personal preference of what I like to write and read. But to be more uh, engaging. I think I, I would say like just do, don't be afraid to like make your characters like flawed and have mm. issues and and like be kind of have like your your own reactions. Yeah, I think that's really important. So, like, I, I cry when I'm writing, and I, I hope that people reading it cry at the same scenes that I do. Like, if you put, like, mm-hmm. everything you have into it, and, like, you're, I guess if you're vulnerable when you're writing, I think you'll be more relatable. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I say, like, if you don't like my books, you wouldn't like me as a person, so I'm not offended right. by that. Like, I, like, you should feel that in your book. Like, if you put yourself out there enough where you're like, oh, that person hated my main character okay well they wouldn't like me either so that's mm-hmm. fine yeah it definitely helps to make your main character just kind of be yourself or, or almost completely yourself yeah um, well, like you, you get some complaints about people saying that like your your heroines like aren't strong enough or assertive enough and you're like well that's just yeah i guess that's, that's just who how i am, I am. So and whatever. Right, right. i'm very happy so <laughs> <laughs> i don't need your hate uh yeah, yeah just put put like realness into it and make them struggle and put like your own pain into it and just make it real you Mm -hmm. don't need another cookie cutter story out there you just want something yeah sometimes trying to make a character likable just makes them kind of a nothing character Mm -hmm. um Mm. so just be uh, let yourself come out of it a little bit yeah i was like no one's perfect so don't don't write Mm -hmm. perfect (laughs) Mm -hmm. i love that so do you guys have any Final words of advice for our writers Final on top words. of all the other amazing advice <laughs> that you've already given them. Oh, I, I do like circling back to the, like, don't be afraid of spending money in marketing. Cause I do think it is mm-hmm. necessary. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just so many books out there. So if you're a hundred thousand in the store, no one can even find you. I, I don't, unless they like search a certain like keyword or something, even then you're not going to be near the top of the list because you're ranked not as high as other books. So oh, here, you have to be. Here, here's some advice uh, yeah. that I think helped us is, is make sure that like you're, you're a reader and you're consuming books in the way that your readers will. Like um, it really helped our marketing efforts when I bought a Kindle and started reading on there. Mm-hmm. Cause then I was able to think about like, mm-hmm. okay, like, this is how I'm finding books. Um, right. So like, mm-hmm. how can I get our book in these places? Yeah, we had switched over to Kindle Unlimited last year and we didn't have Kindle Unlimited personally. So then we yeah, both stupid. got it. And like, now we were voracious readers too on Kindle. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like I understand what a, a Kindle reader wants, or especially a KU reader. Mm-hmm. And we, we have like switched up our marketing to kind of foster like what we learned from being a consumer first. Mm-hmm. Mm, consumer first I like it and you guys did this all on your own right you didn't have a publishing house it was just self-publishing nope just self-publishing we got an agent last year so we have sold a couple of our foreign rights and have done a couple audiobook deals um 
yeah, I, I feel like we're, I, I don't know if we'll ever have a traditional publishing deal. I feel like we, we like what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah, it, it's hard with traditional publishers because they have so many books that like, yeah, maybe they'll market your book hard for like a month, but unless it's like a mega hit, like Harry Potter or something, mm -hmm. like those marketing dollars are going to go to a different book after a month. Yeah. Uh, whereas like we've been advertising the same book for five years and it's still at the top of the charts. I think it's in the 50s today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also uh, another advice that we have, and not everyone will find success this way or want to do it, but I love writing in series. And I think people mm -hmm. get like addicted to your characters and want more and more. And like all of my books are connected, even if they're separate series, like there's crossover characters everywhere. And mm -hmm. a, a traditional publisher wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. They're like, no, yeah. you can't have crossover characters. But for us, I feel like it really helps. It's like marketing that you don't have to spend money on because if someone falls in love with your character, they'll want to read about them, even though they're a side character in a separate story. And mm -hmm. it really just puts like more boost behind every dollar you spend on advertising. Yeah, like your, your books right. are like a whole world now and have like the same places and characters and, yeah. and things. So it's really fun for readers when they get to see a reference to like a character from another oh, book. Oh, but I will love. say, if you do that, mm -hmm. you should definitely write down a couple things about it, like in, that happen in each book so that you can go back and be like, okay, are his eyes blue or mm -hmm. are they brown? And like, right. It's, right. I've had to go back and search for those things because I didn't, I actually outline my books after I write them now, mm -hmm. after each chapter, I write a brief outline just so I can go back and find something if I need to find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, when we started getting um, like like deals with with foreign publishers and stuff, they wanted to see synopsis of all your books, and you're like, oh no! Yeah, I was like, I write synopsis. <laughs> like, yeah, so I do not like writing those. Yeah. I actually don't like those even more than the blurbs. I hate writing well, synopsis. Now you keep your little outlines, and and yeah. so for the synopsis, you just like compile your outline and send I still it. Still don't like it. It's like a long, detailed blurb. <laughs> yeah. All right, and you hate blurbs. I will mention. Side note, on Living Writer, there's a um, there's the ability to write in all those characteristics of each mm -hmm. character, awesome. so you can like really keep track of that. So you might wanna you might wanna check that out at some point. <laughs> I think, I think I need to do that. Happen. One thing that I did recently is I actually started drawing um, all of her main characters so that, that really? helped me visualize them. Uh, we'll, wow. we'll be sharing those on the Facebook group. Yeah, so that's the weird stuff we do when we're not writing or yeah. editing really, I was just procrastinating writing uh, my, my next novel mm -hmm. so I was like I'm gonna draw all your characters <laughs> I was like, okay. yeah. perfect excuse not to write interesting well if you do decide to put the story elements like the characters into Living Writer you can uh, take a picture of those little drawings that you have and upload it as the perfect. each story each uh, character okay so when are we keeping an eye out for your next book when is that expected I don't have the exact date. I think yet. like May fifteenth ish. Yeah. Something like that. I know it's gonna be a Thursday. Yeah, a Thursday near Thursdays. May fifteenth. Yeah. Oh, it's it's like the nineteenth. Does that sound right? Maybe it's uh, somewhere mid May. <laughs> but yeah, we'll probably be doing like a cover reveal and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, we'll soon. have the hard backup soon for pre order. Mm -hmm. I think. Amazing. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. You've had. It seems like a lot of success and even like a short amount of time and I'm positive that it's going to keep going. I really like your writing style. It's amazing. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you for joining us. Our writers absolutely love hearing advice and what better advice from people who are doing it successfully. Thank you for having yeah, thanks us. Thanks for having us. This was a lot <laughs> yeah. of fun. This was really fun. Absolutely. Good. I'm glad. Um, well, thanks again, you guys. We'll keep you. We'll keep an eye out for that next book. It's the, another Empire High Four. Yeah. You said Empire High Book Four. I haven't announced the name yet, so just okay. Book Four. <laughs> All right, we'll keep an eye out for it. 